Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fester, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy freaking Saturday. It's that day of the week, down to the hour, minute, and second that we take. We turn back our normal broadcast time to 10 p.m. GMT or London Standard Time to come together as a community to talk about those things the United States government won't. To talk about those things from science fiction. And yes, to talk about those things, well, you know, from the X-Files. What things are we talking about, folks? We're talking about the things that you can go out and see over your house in the evening, but you just need to go out and look up. What are we talking about? We're talking about good old-fashioned UFOs, and we still call them that here on Disclosure Tonight for a dang good reason. Why? Because there's a word for it in every single language around the world throughout perpetuity. Who knew? So as the United States government continues their war with the five eyes against the extraterrestrial presence, how do we know? Just take a look, folks. It's all military. It's all the military machine. It's all military sensors. It's from the Air Force, from the Navy, you name it. No matter what they're doing to record them or pull their DNA out of the corpses that they pull out of the craft, whether they're living or not, to match them up to ours and to also use their technology for weapons of mass destruction. That's why we come together on Disclosure tonight, many nights a week, to bring you the latest breaking disclosure, the latest news, the latest info, to let you know where everything is going. And today is a barn burner like no other. That's why... We come together many nights a week to bring you the latest disclosure, the latest information. Because you know why? We can't be continuing to listen to these bozos in the White House or those idiots in the DoD who are trying to cover everything up. That's why you'll find myself, Thomas Fessler, our viewer, Colin, and everyone in the chat is welcome for another episode of Disclosure Tonight. Good evening, everybody in London, UK, Europe. All across the world for that matter. Good to see you here. Great great everyone could show up. Yeah, Elf. Uh, Yeah, was a bit inebriated today and spiked the chat. So rather than going through all the different chats where he was around, let's go ahead and take a look and see who we have out there. Uh, Remember, always be kind to other people in the chat. No hate speech, no overly swearing, no just going down the bad road where you don't belong because... uh, It'll get you temporarily banned. So today we're going to be elfless, for that matter. On this note, let's go ahead and see who we have out there in the chat right now. We've got Andrew Donnelly is there, along with Avi M. C. Miltmore is here. Cat made it in. Clive Finnamore made it in your new Clive. Cosmic Dave UK has made it back for our UK show again. Darren Peters is here. Daryl, followed by the Daryl Zernick. Would you look at that? Mr. JRD is around, along with David N., uh, Jake Samoy also made it in. Good to see you, my friends. Kathy is here along with King Frog. Good to see you, King Frog. Marina is back for some more punishment. Uh, well, I call this show punishment, but it's actually entertainment. Take that for, for what it is. Metal Gaming is here. Loyal Opposition 100 just popped up on the radar. Welcome, my friend. Moody Mongol is here along with Michael Suckloff. Welcome, Michael. Appreciate you coming in today. Holy cow. From the great country of Canada. Who else do we have in the chat? Let's take a look and see. Moody Mongol again. Moon Eyes made it in. Uh, Neil Neil Carr is here. Niles Guy just made it in, or he's been here for a bit. Owen from Ohio is around. Patrick is here from the East Coast of the United States. Over where? Somewhere in New York land. How about that? Paul Damon is around, along with PC, also known as Paul. Good to see you. And along with Owen from Ohio. His names are popping in as I'm going through this alphabetically. I'm trying to... <laughs> I can't see everybody. I can see a little bit. Let's go through this. Uh, the Paranormal Circle is here. All right. Let word William in. Who else we have in there? Let's take a look and see. The Bricky. A 78 made it around along with Raven Creek Charms. The Mac Geek made it in along with the Wild Heather. Also made it in. We have a couple Vuzz in today. Welcome, Vuzz. Good to see you around. The Wild Heather is new today. Uh, <laughs> or is it the, if you're in the United Kingdom, I think. Uh, Thor Panku from Canada. Would you look at this? Tom Whitmore is also in the audience right now. That man has 31, 32 years of doing heavy-duty research in the, into the phenomenon, into UFOs, especially a lot of time in Washington, D.C. I want to thank Tom, for coming out and being a part of our audience. Remember, Tom, you can always call in if you ever feel like it. Holy cow, Tony D is still here. Tracy Scott made it in along with Truth Entertainment and Two Heads 666. What a great show, I tell you. Brian Morgan made it around. Kathy is here. So is Moon Eyes made it around. Andy W is in the back and he's in the chat. Great to see everyone coming around. Lady D 
for disclosure made it in as well. Craig Williams is here. Wild made wonders. Good to see you, Wild made. I don't think I welcomed you before. Bush light. Yeah, I'll take a bush light. I'll take a bud light as well. How about that? Neil Morgan is around. And would you look at that? We've got a super chat coming in. May not be the first, but it's the one first one I saw. It is the first one. There we go. I want to go ahead and switch out this music as we've welcomed our audience in. Let's go ahead. Not that one. Nope. Not that one. Come on. There we go. I want to thank Cosmic Dave UK for the first super chat kicking off today's show. Holy cow. Thank you, boss, for giving us our UK program. You better believe it. It's a good thing. I've seen some other channels do that as well, except I moved ours back a little bit earlier, and let's have some fun with it, okay? I want to appreciate you for every dollar that comes in or every pound that comes in disclosure tonight goes back into our production fund. We are so humbled and thankful for everyone's love and support for this channel. It wouldn't be the same without all of you being around, or the Super Chats for that matter. Holy cow. On that matter, let's kick this up. We're over 12 minutes into the show, and we're making good time ready. It's that time of the night again to see who we've got in the bag. Well, let's start off, in, not in alphabetical order. Let's start off with a man whose hair is so fabulous and fine. It has warrants in Florida and Texas. Let's welcome in everybody, the Larry Gurnt. Welcome in, Larry. How you doing, my good friend? You're on mute. Oh, it's good to see you, Thomas. And uh, welcome to all our UK friends and everyone else. Uh, yeah. Great Saturday. Did you get some good sleep last night, I hope? I did. I got good. Some. Yeah, yeah. It helps. It helps. It really does. Also coming in from the United Kingdom, we've got Andy W, also known as Yellow Tommy Tanker, but it looks like Yellow Andy isn't at work today. He's at home. How are you doing, Andy? Hi, Thomas. Yes, I'm home. It's Saturday. I don't work weekends. It's the only time I don't work, but get us from my Saturday evenings with you lovely people. Everybody. Yep. Welcome to everybody. Thank you for coming in, back. my friend. Absolutely. Also, we've got on the we've on the line. We've got Jonathan. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for calling in today. Yo, the lady who. Yes. Yo, lay, yo, lay, yo, lay. Who. Yo, the lady. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. All right, no. All right. <laughs> All right, who else do we have out there uh, in the back? We've got Lord William from Lost, uh, uh, Southern California. How you doing, John? Uh, Lord William? Hi, Thomas. How you doing? Good to be here. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Doing pretty well. Pretty well. Got a lot of sleep. I've got to keep an eye on Cupcake. Was just pet and gone outside and expelled and uh, got to keep an eye on that little one. I tell you, I got to get my yeah, phone just, set up so yeah, I can run keep, with it. Hmm? Yeah, keep eye. Keep your eye on that angel. Oh, we definitely will. Definitely will for that matter. Also in the back, we've got uh, from the great state, from the great country of Canada, we've got Michael Suckloff. Welcome, Michael. How are you doing today? Hey, Thomas. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Also, we got Mike, Mike, Mike. Disclosure. How you doing, Mike? Oh, I'm doing well, Thomas. Hey, did you know it was your buddy Lou Jimenez's birthday yesterday? He did a live show, and he also wanted to experiment with live viewer call-in. What a disaster. Technical oh. difficulties. It was just laughable. I didn't know if you knew that, but it was no. Hysterical. I don't watch that Why, show. Did, did, did someone roast him on the live thing or no? Well, it was he weird because chat. he was he was actually inviting people to roast him. He said, "If you have something to say that good for or against, please by all means speak freely." Oh but man, so you could have called in. Problems because there was huge technical difficulties. It wasn't working. He couldn't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> he was using Streamlabs. Yeah, well, well, using Streamyard or whatever he's doing. Well, here's the thing. Unfortunately, I don't watch that show. It's kind of what I would consider lowbrow humor for that matter. So he's kind of yeah. really uh, poisonous these days. Hopefully, one of these days he'll learn how to get rid of that poison oak that surrounded his aura for that matter. Uh, yeah. Poor guy, poor guy. You know, you just look at someone like that and where they've gone to. You just have to think, hopefully, and pray for him that he'll go ahead and come around into his senses one of these days sooner or later. Either that, or the truth will come out, and he'll be be like, well, I guess I was wrong. Let's move on with it. Moving on with it, we've got Sawan Patel. Sawan, how you doing, my friend? Oh, uh, good. Um, a lot has happened and need to know that we need to talk over, and my crazy theory, I think it makes sense. Cool. We'll get to it shortly. And then, uh, last but not least, we've got Scooby-Doo here. Good to see you, Scooby. How you doing? Thomas, I'm back, and I just wanted to let you know Larry still has an outstanding warrant in the great state of Tennessee, 
not just Florida and Texas. Oh, I forgot about Tennessee. That's right. Well, that's Larry's hair. I get, uh, hopefully Larry doesn't have a, a warrant in Tennessee. Do you, Larry? I don't think you Well, do. by extension. <laughs> he's inextric- connected to it. Inextricably linked, unfortunately. Yeah. Sounds like your hair extensions. <laughs> if you had such, have a warrant out in Tennessee. We'll go with that one. How about that? Yes. Yes, uh, I got a record Sorry. scratch here Thomas. somewhere. Yes, sir. Very, very quickly, uh, there's no link to the chat in. Oh, uh, I put it up and chat. then it flew off the screen, didn't it? Let me go ahead and do that again yeah. right now. Whoops, copy I just got URL. Got asylum in, te- in, in oh, Tennessee. Where is the <laughs> chat? There you go. Let's bring it back and let's We've say. Got a few safe hideouts for you, Larry. <laughs> There we go. Viewer call in. I'll go ahead and pin this. Yes. Cupcakes. Yeah, woke up a little bit earlier than I thought she would today. Uh, test. I need to get that to scroll up a little bit higher so I can take that and pin the message. All right. Yeah. I was babysitting today. We had to send Sapphire Elf to the corner. Didn't work for long. <laughs> Tracy Scott's coming in as well. How about that? All right. So lots of things. Oh. All right, it's got one more super chat coming in as some more people are popping the back. Let's get on to our next super chat really quick. Coming in from Lord William, another 20 bucks. Nothing, just a aliens love gold and golden cupcake. Oh, love you, cupcake. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that, Lord William. Yeah, she's sitting down on the job. She woke up a little bit early. Had some. She woke up a little bit bit early. Had some uh, breakfast, some snacks. uh, Got rid of some stuff. And oh no 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 no. Oh no no no. We got to be careful of this. If it's for an apology, Sapphire. (laughs) Be nice if I let you in. This is this is a double edged sword. Let's not ruin the UK show because I am going to be ready if I need to. To mute the audience in the back if I have to. What did I... Sapphire Elf do now? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we'll get there shortly. On that note, what a crazy show that went on last night with, if you want to call it, um, Ross Colhart. I know uh, Mike's been working a bunch with Ross. Do you want to start this off on this, Mike, before we jump across to Swan? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that um, what Ross was trying to do was make a point on his uh, interviews that Arrow has no means of communication available for any potential whistleblowers. No phone number, no website, no email, nothing. So somebody had sent him Sean Kirkpatrick's phone number and his email. So Say what? Ross what? Did is, they sent they, him his personal phone number and email. They did. Yes. Oh, wow. And he reached out by email to Sean Kirkpatrick because he wants to set up an interview directly with him because him and Bryce Zabel have a lot of interesting questions they would want that man to answer. The thing is, is that he kind of gave a half-assed answer, Kirkpatrick, because he said it would have to be approved through the Pentagon, Department of Defense. So he didn't commit to it, but he... Uh, he kind of half-assed that if they agreed to it, that he would consider doing it. So, as usual with him, he's uh, he's not committing a, a green moving forward to doing anything that would put him in the spotlight. Well, wait a minute. Doesn't Kirkpatrick uh, often reach out as a private citizen to talk about the inner workings of Aro? Wouldn't that be the same thing? You would think, but now yeah. he's using the cover of Ron Moultrie and Uzdi. <laughs> To say, I need approval before I can speak now. Because remember, Ron Moultrie actually handles all the administrative decisions. Whether this would be an administrative decision, it'd probably go up to good old Ron Moultrie and our wonderful lady, our uh, our uh, late night mistress of di- uh, disinformation and misinformation, Susan Goff. <laughs> late night mistress. <laughs> You yeah. kind of describe it like uh, Elvira, which is the yeah. exact opposite of. Hey, we used to have a show on here called, we used to have a segment called Late Night Update. <laughs> so yeah. there's the late night for it, but yeah, late night disclosure uh, coming but, from. But Mike, don't you find it interesting that why couldn't he, he should have just, if, if he had no business wanting to have this interview, he could have just ignored the email. Can I say something? There's no business like show business. <laughs> 
There's no he might business. Be really he knows. lonely right now. What was that, Larry? Yeah. He might he be might really be lonely. lonely right or, now. or here's my crazy theory, Mike. He could be looking to hire Ross Coltart. You know, him and Kirkpatrick are having talks behind the scenes, just be- besides this interview. And he might be no, looking to hire not. Kurt Colhart for as the lead investigator for Aro. So one, that's the furthest thing from the truth. He's not looking to hire Coltart, and and Ross is not personally interested in working directly for Arrow. It would tie his hands up with NDAs, and he wouldn't be able to do his job. So no, that's the furthest thing right. from the truth. And that, here's that can I, if I, if, incorrect. If I can add to that, rumored. Go ahead. Rumored from someone who I can't mention was that Lou was actually offered the the head, the position that Kirkpatrick has to run Aro. But it's the same thing. If Lou would have taken the position as the head of Aro, it he would have had to deal with new NDAs, new different things that would have tied his hands from organizing the disclosure, uh, if you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> movement that's going on outside of the DOD. So the last, yeah, it'd be great to bring them in, but as soon as you bring someone in, they've got the golden handcuffs and the tape across the mouth. They won't be able to say anything. Why, then why just why not just ignore the email? Because he's a narcissist, and if he gets attention his way, even if it's good or bad, he's open to it. If he can cover his he's ass, like Lou, he's like Lou Jimenez. Then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except that he has a, he has a real job, and Lou doesn't. There's a yeah, difference. yeah, that's true. Yeah, but hey, that is a good analogy. I never thought about that one, Swan. <laughs> you never know. I, well, we can't say we've never seen those two in the same place, but I don't think one would fit in the other one's suit. So how about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. one dresses like he's a uh, an '80s gangster, and the other one dresses like he's homeless. So to me, it's completely different. Yeah. One lives in a cardboard box, and one lives in a in a, I guess, a decent house. No, 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 cardboard. No, like come on, let's be. Paladin, you're just jealous of my armor. What? No, it's all right. It's the trunk. <laughs> I only dress like an Elvish paladin. You're jealous of my armor. <laughs> yeah, no, he's no. It's not really like that. He's. Got to remember, Lou said on his show that he lives in his mom's basement, and he's proud of that. So good for him. He gets to oh, stay home really? and take care of his mom. Wow, that's really sad. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's all right. Hey, don't you. you dare get weird like the Elvish mama, or I'll slice your head off. Yes. <laughs> Are you drunk again? Oh, now? he's he's been drunk for about the last 10 hours. How many oh, I've been amazing, and I'm so nice to everyone at the moment. Like, well, you oh, told me to cut. You, so you feel like you're gonna slice We've my been head talking off. about aliens and the politics and stuff. We're gonna be. Oh, you know, just gonna just, just remember, Elf, board, to put your hand up. That's all it is. We'll get there. Right. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> he, he can't. He can't put his no hand up. Being busy. the bad guy here. <laughs> He's too busy talking <laughs> over you. everybody. Okay, here. Elf, just stop talking over everybody so we could have this. We'll bring you up at appropriate time, please. Also, so what else was going on in the Need to Know broadcast that you were uh, that you thought was the major points? I think I may have some clips here from YouTube we can actually play. Not YouTube. Oh, uh, the other point he said this is, is he doesn't think. He doesn't think there's going to be a hearing in the Senate Intel. He thinks there's going to be a hearing within uh, Gillibrand, Senate Armed Services, again. But isn't like Gillibrand all cozy, happy with Kirkpatrick at this point and pushing him up whenever she brings it up? Just like Mike Turner said, she echoed his sentiments exactly. I think. I don't know what's going on. Well, so they think they're going to bring in the ICIG to testify under oath for the public and the icdod he would like to see testify as well but i don't think that's actually going to happen for no, numerous no. reasons that would be a hostile witness yeah it, but it, thomas my suggestion is if you're going to play the clip and by all means you have permission to play the clips from need to know you should do the first few minutes of it where he's talking about the whistleblower that he reached out to him that uh described the craft and he also mentioned the details of where that craft is being held with EG&G, which we now know is part of the program, All which right. is something Hold new. Hold on, let me find it here. I've got, uh, da, 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 da. let me, give me a second here. That's, can I just say that's not new real quick? Just want to jump in. We knew that since Bob Lazar. And that's, that's the thing. 
he was the first one to mention the words E, E, and G when it came to this back in 1991. And it wasn't in his original story. It was when it came out when they doubted where he was working. He uh, brought a payroll stub. And then he walked them through E, E, and G. And when he was walking through the building, people were saying, oh, hey, Bob, how you doing? So this wasn't the first time we heard of E, E, and G. Yeah, that's true. So actually, hey, how, hi, Bob, how were you doing was going on in Los Alamos Labs that he walked with George Knapp right into. One of and the they recognize places. How many more worried about your ESG score these days than how many brown people you got rather than how many oh, Okay, is. okay. Yeah. Bye. All right. Uh, from this <laughs> call. He He's out. Him. He's out. He brought in the He's out of the show. Sorry, yeah. I will not uh, tolerate any hate speech on this was channel. He, was he saying, was he being racist to brown people? He was being yes, racist, yeah. Sorry, I cannot <laughs> allow that kind of stuff. He's been removed from the call. <laughs> He's, He's already been the deep south, south talk and no racism. This is crazy. I yeah, well, uh, toilet world. paper. Oh, I'm all about the human race, guys. Yeah, we're all part of the human race. On that note, let's just uh, Can you move this around a little bit. Let's go ahead. Me? Wrong one. Oh, not that one. We'll just mute Wait. the mic whenever he goes off, Thomas. Well, no, he, he's been kicked. He's he's kicked out of the show. Sick oh. the little brown guy on him. Put Salon on him. Let him go. Oh, don't come <laughs> on. All right, Be let's go ahead and thank Patrick. Tom Whitmore. Tom Whitmore Patrick, for this stay, wonderful stay super. In your lane before I fucking get pissed. All right, here we go. Everyone, stay nice. I'm turning off the back chat for a second. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for your. I want to thank Tom Whitmore for your wonderful super chat. Holy cow! As I have the the back muted so we can hear this stuff. As Patrick is is delving into a dangerous area. Let's just chill and all be happy, right, Larry? We all want to be happy, don't we? Yes. All right. I want to thank Tom Whitmore for this wonderful super chat. Holy cow. What a great guy. What a great person who's done so much for the research in ufology. He's done so much digging into the cover-up known as MJ-12, which is really the basis for the deep state that's getting uncovered now. So Tom is like 30 years into this ahead of everybody else. Tom, thank you for all the work you've done and everything you've got coming forward. All right. Taken care of. Okay. I think the drama's done. Ah. <laughs> Who else is trying Ooh, to that was it? difficult. I know, but I did mute it really relatively quickly as soon as I could. Yes. And oh. uh yeah. also Jer Jeremy Corbell, I don't know if anyone's seen it. He was on that UFO podcast. So he said that one of the first he was going to have two other people from the legacy programs testify at the HOC, but it didn't happen because of one person. And that one person was also the one of the, well, it didn't happen. Not because of the person they threatened to pull all of the, all everybody in the program, uh, uh, what's it called uh, pension. It was crazy. And then oh. the other thing he said was that um, one person from the DOD, and they know who it is, and they're going after him, denied Congress the ability to go into a skiff with Kirkpatrick, uh, with the Grush. So they've got the name of the guy, so if they want to have the ability to exercise the Hallman Act, they can actually go ahead and do that at this point in time. Yes. Well, Lee said they have to show that it's, uh, they have to show that it's damaging costs or something like that. Well, I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll be able to go ahead and do that on that note. Are you talking right at the start of the broadcast as soon as Ross starts talking, Mike? No, it wasn't in the first beginning. I'd have to review it again to give you the exact timestamp on that. Maybe Sawan knows it because he listened to it no, as well. No, I don't think so. Let me go ahead then, and if I could get up to Twitter. Chris, then you can skip through it if you it want. Was, it was right after Kirkpatrick, or right after the, his, uh, what he said he's trying Somebody to get an interview. Somebody very, very helpful. All right, let's listen to this part here. And uh, probably a little just to be case, let's go into here. Uh, let's go back into here. Oh, no, not that one. Let's go to there. Give me a second just to make sure we're all fine if I have to play this a little bit longer. Turn on the scan line so we're watching an old television. Let's go ahead then and then bring up fair use. Not that one, not that one, that one. Uh, we'll use this one. There we go. The fair use, wonderful text going across the bottom of it. Let's go ahead. Do I have the television set in here? I don't think I do. Ah, let's just go with it. All right, here we go. Okay. A bit naughty in defense, sent me Dr. Kirkpatrick's direct email and phone number. And so I uh, won't be revealing that out of respect to him and in the hope that we can somehow get him to appear on the show. But I did drop him an email. 
And uh, he's responded. I asked him for an interview. And he said, I would very much appreciate having the correct media coverage and would love to support additional media interviews, such as the one he did with ABC. Correct media coverage? Is he jealous that he's not getting enough camera time? Uh, no, he's jealous about the kind of coverage that he's getting. Not, not jealous, he's angry. Okay, if you're not talking, Mike, I'm going to mute you right now. There you go. Okay. Also, also, it could be because of that letter he burned all the sources. No other whistleblower is going to go to him now, so he has no one. Well, they have a lot of stuff to go to do to go ahead and look up all the legacy program stuff, don't they? So but, although but they, they may not be having people coming forward, they have a lot of work ahead of them. So there should they, be no they, excuse no, they because they haven't collected any notes, so they don't know anything. Well, legacy program information is supposed to be flowing through from all of the departments in the DOD and the intelligence community and the DOE and everywhere. So remember, yeah, as part of NDAA 2023, all the different parts of the government are supposed to be taking all of their legacy information, uh, if you want to call it uh, classify, if you want to call it categorizing it, and sending that information up to RO. So their large team of how many investigators they don't have should be busy at this point of time to go ahead and bring the truth forward. As I get more messages in the back, let's see what's coming in. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree, Suwan. That was uh, inappropriate. That's why I muted the whole thing. So, uh, Pat, yeah. no, you're fine. You're fine. All right, let's go ahead and do this here. Let's play a little bit more. I'll have to refer you to Pentagon Public Relations uh, as they handle all media engagements. My team has been working with them to try to, and engage more with the public on the work that Arrow has been doing for the past year. Thanks very much for reaching out. Now, that's not a no. Um, yeah, that's not he a also, no. by the way, this, this is really interesting. He, he's got a, a Latin quotation that appears at the bottom of his email. And it is universum mutatio est vita nostra est quod cogitones, cogitationes nostra facere est. Okay. Now, I'm a schoolboy Latin, but I've also put this through a translator. And it comes back as the universe is changing. Our life is what we make our thoughts. The universe okay, is changing. Our life is it's what we what make, we make our, our thoughts. All right. Well, so it's a, is it after this clip right here, Mike, that you're talking about? Yeah, shortly after that, he's going to get into the whistleblower, and it's very interesting details that haven't been heard before. All right. Let me see if that's what I already have as a clip that's been cut out. Uh, Patrick, you have something to say? Yes, I do, Sawan. Can I have a minute to say it, or am I going to get cut off? And no, you're not going to cut it cut off. Time? Be nice. Okay. Be sincere. Well, let's let's. We're going to be very sincere here, and we're going to shut some mouths too, Sawan. I came to your listen. I came to your aid because somebody got to me through multiple channels trying to get on here, and I shot Thomas questions. Why the hell is this person apologizing to me? When they came at you, I gave you what they said was your weak point for you to strike back at them. So listen. What are you talking about? But so on, shut the fuck about? up. Say the, hold on. Say the name Holy of the cow. Hold on there. I'm turning the back chat off right now. Ba Patrick, hold on. Patrick just left. Patrick uh, just left. He left. And Good. he was a bit hot in the wrong way. It's racist. You just don't, you don't repeat racist terms. I never called him a white boy cracker. Well, let's leave all that out. I'm a that's me as well. But the thing is, you just don't go ahead and repeat a racist remark again, talking about someone else with a jovial aspect for it. It's just that's why I asked him to do that. But it sounds like he got a little hot. But either way, let's move on with this clip. If I can, as Cupcake wakes up from this wonderful drama, you gotta love drama, don't you? Holy cow, it's a wonderful thing. Let's see if mm -hmm. I actually remember to go ahead and make myself a bookmark on this. Hey, let's. Keeps hey, maybe I should. Going. Maybe I should sing some more show tunes. Okay, <laughs> no, please no. <laughs>
There's no business like show no business. There's no business so I know. <laughs> <laughs> Children, I've got lollipops. God, that was so bad. Nothing's gonna hurt you. All right. There we go. Let's listen to Ross Colehart. It's a little two minute and 20 second clip, all nice and blurred out, even with our scan lines. So let's, I don't think, even think at this point we need to show fair use, but we'll show it anyway. So let's play this clip, shall we? Let's. Actually, I need to jump into this because if I don't jump into the tweet, it's going to, it's going to pop out through. halfway through. No, it's, there's nothing good about it popping out halfway through, is it, Larry? <laughs> no, no, never. But let me remind you. <laughs> that's never, that's never good. Yes. No. Let me remind you that you don't even need to run the fair use because Ross is a media partner of this channel and you have free access to use his clips. Okay. It's not Thank a problem. You. It's gone. Oh there we go. Hey, Mike, with the sound have effect. You been, have you been communicating with Ross trying to get him on the show? <laughs> I've been communicating with Ross regularly, but not to get him on the show because of the work that he's in the middle of well, doing and the maybe, things that are unfolding. Well, maybe he doesn't have to come on camera. He could just come on audio and stop in for a little bit sometimes. I know he's a little busy, but considering how much time you guys are hanging out. <laughs> it'd yeah, be cool. but let me remind you that Ross is 14 hours ahead of our current time, so it's a little bit of a conflict in the schedule. I know. Well, if there's ever an opportunity, even if it's pre-recorded, I will get up at no matter what time it is to go ahead and rearrange my schedule for us. Well, you and I can discuss that privately. Of Tom, course. We can figure something out. Yeah, of course. Thank you for pushing Swan. Swan is the pusher. <laughs> He's not the no, and the punisher in one. You know, it would be great to have Ross on our show. That's why. Right. Yeah. On your show. Yeah. Yeah, our show is more like it's Swan. This is our show, meaning it's part of us. It's part of the viewers. It's part of actually part of the call in our panel, and it's part of the audience. And that would be a wonderful thing to say the least. Let's play this clip and see if this is the right one. Can I suggest? Let's just. I want to come back to this because I, I really want to plant this idea in the minds of opinion leaders. You've got Thomas Monheim an American intelligence officer who's currently the Inspector General of the United States Intelligence Community. He was confirmed by the Senate in September 2021 to be the permanent IG. He's previously the General Counsel, the lawyer for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, where David Grush worked. He's also served as a prosecutor, defense counsel, military judge of the White House Military Office. And he was also mobilized for nine months with Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. He's a former colonel from the um, Air Force Reserves. Now, this guy is the bloke who's apparently investigated David Grush's allegations. He's the guy who was apparently, according to David Grush, deposed, taken testimony from first hand witnesses. How hard would it be? for Senator Kirsten Gillibrand as the chair of either the um, Emerging Threats Committee on the Senate Armed Services Committee, or I think she's also a majority member on the Cyber Security Committee. Um, and there's also, I think, the other committee that might be relevant here is the Strategic Forces Committee that she sits on as a majority member. But all of those are subcommittees of the Senate Armed Services Committee. I'm told okay. that it's most likely it's going to be the Senate Armed Services Committee. Frankly, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't Just matter. Just so long as we get the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community before a committee under oath, and he has to be under oath, and asked the key question, Sir, Mr. Inspector General, have you investigated Mr. Grush's claims? Yes, sir. Have you spoken to direct first-hand legacy program crash retrieval reverse engineering witnesses? Yes, sir, according to Mr. Grush. Isn't it all over at that point? Yeah, well, it would certainly be That's closer been... to being all over. I mean, well, how, it, how, is, how the... is that? Seriously. I, I, just, I mean, here's I mean the seriously. Thing. I mean, let's just do it. That yeah. Hebrew, is, is this the point you wanted to hear, Mike? No, I wanted after this, he's talking about a whistleblower that he's working with behind the scenes that uh, has knowledge of an egg shaped craft that EDG was dealing with from 19, I think it was 97 to 2014. Which company? EGG. Oh, wow. EGG, e the energy company. 
Yeah, you should skip forward past this. And, I can't. Uh, this is this is a clip from Twitter that I found the only one from Need to Know. I know we could go ahead and play. I've got Daryl Zernick saying two minutes. Se- uh, he's saying seven minutes, 55 second mark is another clip we're going to go ahead and play from this. So let me go ahead and jump across, get this together here. I'm playing from QuickTime here. So apparently I need my glasses to see the really freaking small stuff on the screen because it doesn't. It lets me zoom in the text, but not the UI. Seven minutes and 55 seconds? Or is it from the end? It's from the end. Thomas, uh, Frankly, Dale is saying 42.30. 42.30, 42.30, 42.30. No, it's not 42.30. That's the end of the broadcast. I know, there was something oh, well, he was bringing up about the end of the broadcast. Uh, no. Uh, watch the end of, the, of this need to know video for a hint as to which candidate for president will make aliens a political issue. Yeah, they're guessing it could be Trump. No, you don't need to play that. All right, so I don't have a time code for you, Mike. I'm not sure where to go ahead and play. Let me go ahead. I am. Now I would like... have to search it. So if you want, let me do that in behind the scenes, and I'll come back and let you know what time. Maybe it's a 7:55. Let's take a look and see if this is it me to tell you about somebody who contacted me just in this past week. Oh, th- this is it, Mike, right? one of my legacy yeah, that's program it. sources. They're not I want to thank the, the person in the chat who just won a booby prize. who's contacted Arrow, and with their permission, I'm allowed to talk about the fact that they've approached Arrow, and they told me that they've given a 45-minute telephone interview to Arrow about what they know. And in all honesty, they've approached with some really interesting information, which I'd love to know if we do get the opportunity to talk to Dr. Kirkpatrick, how have they investigated what this person has told them? So this is a guy who um, knew... Okay, if he does get a chance to talk to Kirkpatrick, Kirkpatrick will not talk about any methods he has done to go ahead and investigate it because Kirkpatrick is going to call this what? An ongoing investigation, and they cannot comment on uh, ongoing investigations, right, Mike? Correct. No information can be openly discussed on a current investigation of any sort for any agency. So, yeah, Kirkpatrick will use that to not have to explain or talk about any of this. Good point, Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, but the investigation by Kirkpatrick is already over. He's made his conclusion already. No, it's ongoing. He hasn't made a conclusion. He just made a statement that so far there's no evidence to support any NHI or uh, extraterrestrial technology, to his knowledge. That's all he did. He made a statement, Larry. Okay. So play the clip, Thomas. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. We're playing. We're playing it. We're playing it. Somebody who worked for a major defense contractor and had a very high DOD security clearance. Um, uh, This person had a great uncle who passed away last year of a heart attack in his sleep at age 75. Their great uncle served in the U.S. Air Force for 28 years at E-8 level and then was hired to work with EG&G and worked at Area 51 Groom Lake from 1997 to 2014. He retired working for JT4, whatever that is. Before he passed away, This relative, this great uncle, confided to my source very important information that to the individual that has contacted me. It was shared that the great uncle had a conversation with a senior engineer when he first arrived in 1997, whose EG&G group was tasked with trying to reverse engineer an object that was recovered and brought to Area 51 in the 1980s by some CIA folk. Shortly after that conversation, the senior engineer retired. Their great uncle also saw an up-close, crystal-clear photograph of the same exact object attached to the wall of a secure vaulted data storage room at Area 51 sometime after. The great uncle stated it was absolute proof of a non-human craft, but that the public would probably never get to see that photograph. He said, quote, the object was egg-shaped, about the size of an SUV, silverish gray in color, smooth, seamless, no control surfaces or propulsion visible, no writing, no symbols of any kind. A few men could pick it up, yet it could not be cut open and x-rays couldn't penetrate it. 
the best engineers at EG&G tried to figure out how to activate it and what its power source was to no avail. They finally came to the conclusion it was a probe craft sent here from another planet. This anonymous individual... Well, either that or there's some ETs inside in their own time zone saying, shit, they got us. We're not going to let them in. Don't let them in, whatever the cost is. <laughs> you know? Oh, God, great. I'll get to you in one second, Tracy. Holy cow. Let's go ahead and play this a little bit more. ...is willing to testify under oath before Congress. He also took a smartphone image of his great uncle's EG&G engineering group and their insignia patch, and he's authorized me to allow us to show that patch, which I'll send you after this chat, and you can cut it in, my friend. This individual has also interviewed with Arrow and has signed and dated an official memorandum of record. And he's also spoken with Tim Burchett as well, the individual. Now, this is a really interesting example. The individual? <laughs> Tim Burchett. He paused on that one. Coming, Tim Burchett is our wonderful representative from the great state of Tennessee of somebody who's come forward to Arrow with information. And I just wonder when Dr. Kirkpatrick says that there's no credible evidence of extraterrestrial visitation of planet Earth, is he aware of this memo? Is he aware of this conversation that this person purports that he's already had with people from Arrow? Uh, is he saying to Congress that there is no information because this person's information, of course, is hearsay? But you could very you could very quickly check this information by approaching the direct source and and moreover checking the bona fides of the great uncle. So yeah. I guess I'd just like to know more. I mean, it we'd all like to know more. The question is, EGNG, formerly known as Edgerton, Germanhausen, and Greer, different kind of Greer. G-R-I-E-R -E instead of G-R-E-E-R -E Incorporated was the United States National Defense Contractor were provided and provider of management and technical services. You can't get more generic than that. The company was involved in contracting services of the U.S. government during World War II and conducted weapons research and development during the Cold War, Cold War era. In other words, it was involved in UFO research. How about that? It had close involvements with some of the government's most sensitive technologies. How? Uh, who would have? Who would have thought? Uh, that's crazy shit. Wow. Yeah. So that's EGNG. So yes, it's spread apart. It's you know they've talked about this being compartmentalized. This is about compartmentalized down to the point, like Grush said. It's across many companies who have been given this technology oh, to go ahead and deal also, with it and find the truth. So, so Corbell said something really interesting. He let it slip. One of Grosh's firsthand accounts mm. is that he was a direct witness. It was his job, right? And in his job, he found firsthand evidence of misappropriation of funds to these legacy programs. Interesting. I did not know that. Coming in from Cosmic Dave UK, he completes the segment on, if you want to call it the transition of EG&G. EG&G became URS and got a probe crash thing in 1947. Well, I think the EG&G was along, uh, around longer than 47, but either way, I guess they got a, the, is this the probe crash they're talking about or who knows what they're talking about? They're calling it a probe because you know why? They can't get inside. And what happens when you go inside these craft, Larry? It is They're much bigger, bigger on, on the, the inside. inside than the outside. Yeah. yeah. So although it's the size of an egg and it's so long, 40 feet across, 40 feet long, whatever it is, that 40 feet could translate to something bigger, than, much larger than a football stadium on the inside, as we've heard before. So again, these are summations. These are, if you want to call it... Um, hypothesis of what this thing could be because the truth of the matter is they can't figure out truthfully what it is. Yeah. Your, your thoughts, uh, Mike, since you're the one who said, bring up this clip. 
I said bring up this clip because it gives us some insight for the first time in the public yeah. of one of these programs, how they operate, what's really going on, and the fact that they have access to the object, but they gave up on it, basically, from 97 to 2014. Yeah. So that's 17 years. They weren't able to do anything with it, and it stayed at that point. So that's interesting information as well. That's why I wanted you to bring this clip up from Russ. Appreciate that, sir. Bringing up a more of a scientific mind on it. Let's bring up Peter Panda. Peter, your thoughts? Uh, well, I was I was just going to mention, you know, everybody looks at the Navy and the Air Force and all their technology development programs, but everybody overlooks the CIA. You know, the CIA, they don't think about the CIA having a lot of technology but the CIA developed one of the biggest technology programs in U.S. history, that being the Archangel A-12, which was the single-seater precursor to the SR-71 Blackbird. And it was probably the most technologically advanced program they had going. So we shouldn't overlook the CIA, which they just mentioned was in charge of this egg. And the second thing I want to mention about that is that egg sounds a lot like the Lani Zamora uh, incident description to me. Which is a lot, if you could, uh, uh, if you want to call it, um, enlighten us on that incident, sir. The Lani Zamora? Uh, there was an egg that landed, and Lani Zamora saw it. Um, is that the one that happened after uh, around the same time as Roswell, or is this another time? 1967. New Mexico. I thought it was 64. Yeah, he... 1964, and Project Blue Book said it was one of the best cases that they ever had if i'm uh think i'm correct on that but i'm not you might you might be you might be yeah yeah but he was a a a police officer uh he was a police i recall he was a police officer that uh was out chasing a car as the story goes from uh, possibly a teenager drag racing or something and he saw this or heard it uh and thought maybe it was a plane crash of some sort so he went over to check this thing out and saw a uh, what he described as an egg-shaped craft uh, kind of on its side and people have said well maybe that was a tic tac but yeah. you know it looks like maybe that was an actually an egg yeah and uh he did describe that he he thought that he saw uh two figures possibly come out of the craft walk around it go back into the craft and it made a large sound when it took off and then went somewhere he couldn't track very quickly. And that's what I remember of it. I don't remember all the details. I'm sure someone else here remembers much more. Yeah. I appreciate you going ahead and bringing that interesting information. Yeah, it's not just the shape of an egg. It's the shape of an, a sheer egg. Absolutely. Thank you for that uh, interesting information. I appreciate that, uh, Peter. Fred Rogers, you had your hand up for a bit and you put it down. I'm calling on oh, you now. Sorry. Yeah, well, I, I had a question, but I, I think it was answered. I was just... Very interested. You're talking about probing, but I think that's a different type. I'm more fascinated with the egg shape. As we know from um, the deposition of Epstein that he was supposedly had an egg shaped penis. Oh, I haven't heard about that one. That's an interesting, interesting thing to say the least. I'm sure. Well, thanks for getting my, my curiosities working. Uh, Absolutely. We got it. Yes, sir. We have another super chat coming in. This one coming in from Cosmic Dave UK, a two pounder saying the egg uh, vehicles are also drawn in Hindu art. There you go. So we've got these things crashing. They're coming down. And more importantly, they're actually drawn and talked about in Hinduism. That's why I was saying last night, although we got some people who are interested in Buddhism, AVM, we need to bring you in, my my friend, as more of a regular on the show if we can, at least one day a week. We need an expert in Hinduism who actually knows this stuff and can talk to it because there's so much there, there's so much to uncover, and that's a that is a mindset, a philosophy that actually talks about the consciousness and everything that goes around it. Also, well, go well, ahead. We don't know if uh, well, Avi might not feel invited because of Patrick's racist comment. Well, Avi can feel totally invited. There was one little comment that Patrick slipped up on, unfortunately, repeating something someone else said that happens on the show. It happened a little bit last night about some stuff, and we just have to, you know, understand not everyone is as considerate 
and um, understanding as they potentially should be. We can Wait, look at one little thing and shove night. someone down or versus say, uh -huh, don't let that happen again because it will. I will squish you like a bug. Who said something racist about me last night? Nope, no, no. It was about it was uh, other stuff that was brought up by some other people with regards to some other stuff. I don't want to jump in tonight, right now on on camera. I'll talk. I can talk to you about it off air. Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, um, either way, Tracy Scott, you have your hand up, my dear lady. Thank you. I have three important points. Can you move your microphone a bit closer to your mouth? You're you're quieter than usual today. Sorry. That's okay. I got I you now. Three important notes. Yes, three important matters. Yes. Ross said three guys were moving the craft. Three guys were moving the craft is what Ross said. Yes. Yeah. Look into Coral Castle. And D C Long. Looking to Coral and Castle and D C Long, yes. Are you okay, also, Miss? No, yes. Let her talk. Let her talk. Yes. Yeah. Also, please show end. 30 seconds of B, B, C clip. I'm doing petition outside B, B, C on 11th next Friday. So you're 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 petitioning yes. BBC uh for the end of next Friday regarding the last 30 seconds of a clip. Is it the clip from Need to Know or is it a clip from something else? I think she's talking about the BBC interview of David Grush. Which we played before. Rebellion. Yes, we've played that one. I can go ahead and let's see if I can find God, BBC has so many different analogies of what it stands for. Let's see if I can find BBC. Someone has raised their hand. Andy? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw back to what Tracy said about Coral Castle. That rang a massive bell. Um, it's, it's in America, isn't it? It's a, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to find the right wordage of it. It's, it's a, a, an area that's made of all stone. But the guy did it all on his own. Right. And he had and some mysterious black box that he had on top of a tripod, which enabled him to take these really heavy things and move them around by himself. And he never gave, gave out his secret sauce, if you want to call it, Andy, for That's what correct. was going on yeah. in Coral Castle. And the reason I was closing my eyes is when I've dealt with um, people in Hong Kong, in mainland China, different parts of the world. Sometimes I'll close my eyes to shut off all other inputs and allow me just to focus on the words Tracy was hearing. And that's just my personal way to go ahead and not constant. It's concentrating more, but it's shutting off all my other inputs so I can focus on specifically what I'm hearing to be able to talk to it. Now, if Tracy is talking about the last 30 seconds from the interview with, um, David Grush BBC Radio and BBC Radio. I'll yeah. go ahead and play that right now. Let's do it. Patrick issued a statement last week. You'll be aware of it, calling your testimony insulting and saying that you were a never re a representative to his unit. Dr. Kirkpatrick oversaw our activities and what we were doing and the money we were spending. I never said I was a part of the core team, so I believe um, it was just lost in translation or misconstrued. David Grush and Chuck McCullough. Is that the point you want me to play, uh, Tracy? A little bit further back? How much further back?
I think she wants Wait. you to keep going. I think she said two minutes and 22 seconds. All right. That's all I have. The The interview ends at that point from the clip that I actually have. Yeah, she said she said keep playing, I think. Yeah, but but uh, I I think maybe what she was talking about was Ross. Uh, I, I know Ross commented on that, that uh, the interviewer didn't make a point of uh, Rush saying that there were first person witnesses that were reporting to the inspector general ic and i think he admonished the bbc for mess, missing that and messing up on that yeah so the clip that i have only goes up to that point i wish i had more but that's all i have currently downloaded for that particular clip Th thanks for bringing that to our attention tracy thomas I, I have to go eat dinner i'm sorry i'll be right back i apologize for interrupting oh eat it while it's warm my friend i can hear my dinner being cooked upstairs which i'm not going to be able to go and eat for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah tr uh, tracy day, just has some um, uh speech if you want to call it issues and some days it's better some days it's worse she's a wonderful person who's coming on camera here uh, and i'm so privileged and thankful that tra uh, that tracy works past where she is to try and be a part of this show. It just shows how inclusive we are and how much we care about all of our viewers out there, no matter where they're from, no matter how they are. Thank you for being here, Tracy. I really want, I, if I could give you a kiss and a big hug, I'd do it right now, my dear lady. I agree with what Thomas just said. Tracy, you're a great person. We appreciate your input here on the show. And I also wanted to let you know that I followed you on Twitter, love. So you Me have too. support from us. Yeah. Me too. Absolutely. Also, She's Andy W, your hand is up. Actually, Mike jumped in and basically said what I was going to say. But yeah, I'm I'm following you, Tracy, and yeah, you keep pushing through, girl, and and yeah, you're doing really well. Oh God, there was a story. Not I... phenomenal what you're getting onto in in Twitter. Everybody, um, yeah, Tracy can put it up in the in the um chat. Follow Tracy. She's doing a really good job on Twitter. Yeah, there was a yeah. story that I had uh, about. Oh gosh, you're making her cry. We love you, Tracy. Love yeah. you. Absolutely. Yeah, she, she's kind of easy to love, isn't she? She's a wonderful person. And you know what? It just shows we're a very loving and accepting show, and it's about everybody. So if you're going to say nasty things, Alf, we're going to kick you out because this is about love and understanding, and that's what the aliens are about. Right, Larry? We hope. <laughs> we hope. We hope, yeah. Just don't listen to too many videos from uh, uh, Ted Rowe because it'll change your opinion really quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. We've got uh, uh, Michael. Your hand is up. I just wanted to say I've never met an alien I didn't like. Means you haven't met many, have you? <laughs> All right. So now <laughs> on News Nation, UFO Secrets Revealed. Ex now, experts on debunking bogus UFO videos. Here's the thing. There is a lot of videos that are put out there on a regular basis. Remember, 95% to 98% of all the videos you're going to see out there are fake because people are trying to make themselves feel good. They're trying to, they're trying to get themselves some fame and for the moment. And you just have to remember a lot of the stuff, if it looks too good, chances are it is too good. So let's watch this. There's some interesting people here. This isn't, I'll be honest, Mick West. And Lou Jimenez is not part of this video for a dang good reason. Let's go ahead and play it, shall we? As my immune system attacks my freaking right wrist. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what next? I go down to one milligram of prendazone a day, and it, new things pop up as my immune system says, Aha! I'm, I'm free! I'm free! I can go ahead and kill you. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's get to it. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, Admiral. You know, right now it doesn't seem like there's really a place for people to send these videos. It, it almost seems like there should be some kind of like government website or something where you could submit the videos and then they could review them and see if it's actually something. Yes, and there's supposed to be. Well, even Lou Elizondo was going to have a video website that he was going to bring out. You could go ahead and upload the videos and see what was going on. And that thing fell off the bus. Let's listen some more. Thing significant because even if it's not like aliens. You know, wouldn't the government sort of want to know if like another uh, country is testing something, you know, out there? Well, exactly. In fact, one of the witnesses, Lieutenant, former Lieutenant 
Ryan Graves, uh, he has founded Americans for Safe Aerospace. Yeah. And at that hearing, he, he testified to say that he, he'd like to get the FAA to support commercial pilots to report such instances. And I fully support that I'm on his, his board, advisory board. And, and that's what has to happen. There's more disclosure, more people coming out, and a, and a database to be established with that. Like, like for example, there, there are some that exist at the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. And I think the government needs to get behind this and do this in an authoritative, scientific way. But Ben, I mean, is there a chance that that they don't want to do that for other reasons? Like, why wouldn't the government have already done that? Well, I, I think a lot of it comes down to money and their mandates. Of course, the DOD and Arrow, the mandate is to look for uh, incursions on airspace and infrastructure vulnerabilities. It's not to really for scientific knowledge per se. And, and what civilians are reporting um, really has to go to civilian agencies. Like you said, there, there are some uh, places you can go in apps. And, and earlier in the week, I was talking about Enigma has created an app. But the government themselves are not really going out directly, like some assume, into the and taking civilian reports. It's kind of the last uh, priority, I would say, um, when it comes to funding. So hopefully we get to that point. Yeah, it certainly seems like that. Admiral, I'm curious. I'm told you have actually had an experience with seeing something and, and catching video of something. Uh, tell us about that. Well, exactly right. And this is really why I've been supporting Ryan Graves for his Americans for Safe Aerospace. In 2015, uh, when I was a one-star admiral, I was in charge of a support command of meteorologists and oceanographers that provided weather forecasts for you, Larry. the uh, aircraft carrier strike groups. And the now famous Go Fast video from a Navy F-18 off the Theodore Roosevelt, USS Theodore Roosevelt, uh, I saw that uh, and received that video uh, on, on the Navy's secret network. Uh, it's because I was in charge of meteorologists supporting these uh, aviation operations, I had received an email from a two-star admiral in charge of the exercise. And he had actually sent it to a number of, of one and two-star admirals like me in charge of uh, aircraft carrier strike groups and other support commands. And the title of the email was urgent safety of flight issue. And in the text, he asked if anybody knew what these objects were. And, that, and it was the go fast video that was attached. And he said, report to me immediately if you do, because we might have to cancel the exercise because of safety concerns. And of course, once I saw that, I knew immediately what, what was occurring. This is nothing we could have engineered. And, uh, and then, Interestingly, the next day, that email was wiped from my computer really? and eventually confirming what was, yes, reported at the So it just hearing. disappeared out of your inbox even? Yes, exactly. And the inboxes of all the other addies, there were many more, and uh, including my deputy, who was a senior civilian. And so, of course, we, had, we believed it was inside some compartment of program, and that video was inadvertently released. And now that's all come out at the hearing. Interesting. I can't. What were you thinking when you first opened that? So it's really interesting. He's got videos and different evidence that was passed on to him as part of his duties and his position. But then uh, the overseeing eye of Saruman, if you want to call yeah. it from our uh, government, went and deleted and removed all the messages from their inbox. But then again, they do use Microsoft Outlook and, they, and the federal government has been hacked by the Chinese. We can't say it was a Chinese then. But it's our own internal, uh, if you want to call it, network of people saying, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't have access to that. We're going to go ahead and pull it out because it's a matter of security, of national security that's above your pay grade. It seems like 1984. I know, or, or even worse, because it's 2023. <laughs> Let's yeah. move on. It's like 2020, it's like 1984. Advanced. We got a little super chat coming in from Hayden saying we don't trust. Oh, let's just say this. This is a bipartisan movement. No matter who it's going to take to bring out the truth, whether it's on the right side or the left side, us here at Disclosure tonight in the center, irrespective of who's in the role, this is a bipartisan movement from either side of the fence. So we can say, oh, we're not going to trust Adam Schiff to bring it out. Or we're not going to trust Hillary Clinton or Trump or Obama or Biden or 
Trump or whoever it could possibly be, or even God, I hate to say this, DeSantis. <laughs> no, we're not going to trust it. You know, it's going to come down to the, the Lucy Colin football Harris. has to be passed to the center because this is something where everybody has to come together, the left and the right, and we have to join hands. If we don't do that and we keep this partisan, we will never get beyond the lies that have been spread. Right, Larry? Absolutely. Yeah. This is a, this is really the first crack in the right-left divide, the first uh, glimmer of hope that we could come together. Yeah. I'm really embracing it. I'm saying let's let's go ahead and unite like Tucker Carlson, for example. I used to hate him. I used to hate him like with a passion. And now I absolutely love the guy because what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the things that he's saying about UFOs and also other deep state stuff, which he's fed up with. And um, I'm uniting with him on that. And I feel really good about that. And I'm hoping for the day, yeah. if we can just stick united on those issues, maybe the world will change so much oh. that all the other issues that we disagree yeah. on will just go away. Yeah. Let's keep away from politics and just remember, disclosure is a bipartisan effort. Both sides of the fence, and even those who are on the fence, are coming together. And we will get there. You just have to say, oh, we don't like this person saying on it because they're on this side or they're on that side. No, we're all together on this one. I think there's a song out there about this uh, from High School Musical, but that's okay. We'll get to that. Gary is not here to sing it for us, so... Let's move on. <laughs> Email. Like, were you thinking, guy, I, I don't think this is meant for me? Or were you just surprised by the video? Well, I thought two things, uh, Brian. First of all, a previous job of mine was the superintendent of the U.S. Naval Observatory. And that is the command in the Navy that's responsible for cataloging star positions and their brightnesses used for satellite navigation. But I had a team of astrophysicists and astronomers, and I learned from them how large the universe is. And, you know, we're in, we're in a galaxy of 100 to 400 billion stars among an observable universe of over 100 billion galaxies. And it's just very arrogant of us to think we're the only species that's right. created a means to travel between celestial bodies. So when I saw that, I, I pretty much it was confirmation to me that there was some kind of extraterrestrial activity occurring. And again, that's all coming out right now. Yeah, it's interesting what we've learned over the last couple of weeks. Uh, ben Hansen and Admiral uh, Tim Gallaudet, thank you both so much for coming on tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go all to right, thank you, Banfield. Appreciate you. that. Great clip coming in. He had some little pauses to go ahead and talk about this. So even this just goes and illustrates. And yes, Tracy, you can leave your, if you want, <laughs> leave your Twitter address. It may be a little bit less, more if you want to call less people for people to go after you, if you want to leave your email, that's fine. If you want to leave your Twitter handle, that's another way. Because if you, as long as you leave your DMs open, anyone can jump to what's well, not Twitter anymore. It's X, but you know how that goes. Uh, yeah, it, but it's interesting, again, to hear about people who were in the military who are investigating and trying to figure this out, the oversweeping hand of the deep state has been reaching into you gotta you gotta admit probably for a long time into the hands of the people who are actually out there and their job is to investigate and figure it out but all of a sudden boom it's gone what are your thoughts on this mike or anybody else well, my thoughts on this is finally we're getting to the point where we're calling out these deep state actors and, you know, the sunlight is on them now. And through the Holloman rule or whatever rule, they're going to lose it all. Yeah, exactly. Either Well, this is not even just a Holloman rule. This is just going in and dealing with people who are in the positions within our military to keep their eyes to the sky and figure stuff out and give guidance to the people who are up there. If our government is going and locking them out from being able to go ahead and deal with it, it just shows that the cover up goes not just for the general public, but it also goes in with different parts can, of the DOD, doesn't it? Can, can you believe Thomas that two people from the legacy program were going to testify at the HOC 
but the DOD didn't want that to happen. So they threatened everyone's pension in the legacy program. Yeah. Well, they, well that's, that's reprisal. That's, there's a law against that. It's well, a law against that. And, and it's so infuriating that they have the gal, the gal to threaten everybody's pension. Well, it comes yeah. down to was when a lot of people had these experiences, Larry and Swan. Ooh. This is before reprisal. These are just NDAs that were put in place to keep anybody and everybody from talking about it. That's the sad part. Mm -hmm. Thomas, uh, I think I just missed the question you asked. Ask it again. Uh, someone what was the question again? <laughs> oh, talking about, yeah, we had people who were in the military who were, who, who were basically given the jobs to go ahead and actually report in this information. And their their communications, their stuff has been, if you want to call it, controlled by the deep state it just seems like the cover-up goes on for the people who are in the military as much as it does as people who are outside of it right and ross has made numerous points at different times about people that are currently in the military do not have a clear-cut means of reporting this not through the chain of command there's nothing that's in place yet and he even doubts that they're completely covered under the whistleblower protection provisions in the current NDAA. He's yeah. right. And that's why they're not coming forward. They're actually destroying. Some of the pilots have said that they're destroying video evidence because they don't want it to be held against them and they don't want to go through the debrief, which could take up to eight hours. And it's also an, a knock on their record. So they're just done dumping it, which is ridiculous that that's the yeah. state that the military is in right now with this. Yeah, that's the Air Force specifically. They do not want this to come out because they got. They got a lot of dirt. They've been doing the worst when it comes goes way back to the 40s with this issue. And they are fighting back hard. So and I hope the Senate has the balls and the courage to uh, go after them because uh, James Fox was saying the other day in a space that they weren't, just, happy, let's just... they weren't happy with Tim Burchett, the way how he uh, handled this hearing that, that he uh had a cowboy style to it. And James Fox was like, oh, I loved it. It was great. What are you guys doing? You know, so I know it's a sensitive issue, but the bottom line is we got to get to the truth and people got to pay and there's got to be consequences. Talking, talking about getting to the truth. This is a UK centric show. Finally, uh, coming to us from Christopher Sharp from the Liberation Times. He says, finally, after a lot of work, I managed to get a statement from the UK's Ministry of Defense. The MOD is not aware of any salvage operations with materials of unexplained origin. Well, they may know where it's coming from, so that's just the MOD saying, we don't know anything and we're going to de deny everything like they've been continuing to do for the longest time. It's something I that none of us should be surprised about. Yeah, not surprised at all. <laughs> coming from the only Brit in the house. Oh, sorry, Tracy. Yeah. yeah. There's two two Brits in the house, but yeah, yeah. Coming, coming from me, I'm 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 far from surprised to be honest. Right. So I've got another clip, another uh, text piece here. I'm going to go ahead and share with everybody. This is coming from Joe Maguria, and this is talking about this is a if you want to call it a whistleblower from the Air Fa Air Force talking about a very interesting scenario. I'm a retired Air Force bird colonel and a fighter pilot. I wish to remain anonymous. In the spring of 1980, turning back the clocks to 1980, I was sitting uh, alert in northern Europe with a fully armed F-15 about 3 a.m. The klaxon sounded, and I was scrambled in to intercept and identify an uncorrelated target that had penetrated <laughs> NATO airspace. Let's move on with that. I was vectored to the target by GCI, which is Ground Control Intercept Controller. The target was not displaying a transponder code, meaning whether it's a friend or foe. If I deemed the target to be hostile, I had the authority to shoot it down. I found the target with my radar, lock, with my radar locked on. Within two seconds, the target sped away from me, exceeding Mach 2, which is nothing because we've got stuff on, on camera that's going 1,300 miles per hour, well above Mach 2. With over 4,000 hours of flying time, I had never seen anything like this before. 
I tried to pick up a visual and saw a reddish pulsating light about 10 miles in front of me. I thought it might be a wingtip light of a Russian bomber. Then to my surprise, the light changed directions and excelled toward, accelerated towards me at high speed. As a fighter pilot, I thought the Russian bomber I was after had fired a missile to me and I took immediate evasive action with a hard right turn at a steep climb with my afterburners to keep me at speed. While climbing, I reached down and turned on the master arm switch to arm my missiles in order to defend myself. I saw the light slow down and pass my left wing. I then realized it was not like anything I had seen before. It had structure. A glowing football shape, Lucy, about the size of my F-15. Quote, I got another radar lock on and was prepared to fire an AIM-7 missile as soon as I locked on. The object went into a vertical, accelerated climb, and I decided not to fire at it as it was no enemy airplane. Quote, I watched the object disappear into space. No doubt it was a UFO. During my debrief with my commander, I was told, like we've heard so many times before, to never speak about it again. Of course, my gun camera film was confiscated. I swear on my honor, this story is absolutely true. Thoughts from the back. What are your thoughts, Larry? Oh, I'm just, my heart just sinks at how many times that was told to people you keep your mouth shut about this you never say another word about this um and we're taking everything you've got and i just uh, that just grinds my gears man it's been it, it's been going on for so many years and they're still doing it today probably it's a shame that we have so many people who are out there to protect our skies and they're fighter pilots. And whenever they run into this stuff, whenever they run into this situation, they're they're taken out and they're they're required to go ahead and never speak about this again. This is where the point of what Ryan Graves is talking about comes into play. Ryan talks about the need for communication on this. For more than anything, it's a risk to our fighter pilots. More than anything, I'm going to jump that shark and I'm going to say what we're truly dealing with here is a safety issue. It's a training issue. If you have people who are running into this and they're having encounters and different things are going on and they're told never to talk about, never to go ahead and, and speak about this again, how are other pilots going to know what they should be doing or they shouldn't be doing when they're dealing with this type of phenomena? Does that make sense, Larry? It's like it's like Thomas. It's like driving um, in the in, at night without your light without your lights on, and then expecting, ex, and then yeah, it's like driving with the uh, in the dark with without your lights on. Right. Well, not even that. These people have their lights on. It's just dealing with when there's issues of unknown origin, when there is different practices that could be taken by the pilots when they encounter this type of phenomena, that they should have the safety protocols, literally a safety protocol for them of knowing what they should do, more importantly, what they shouldn't do to go ahead and keep themselves safe. Peter, your hand is up. Yeah, I think this is another case, like you're saying, of they saw something and the military is a little bit like the board, right? It's yeah. like if it's not a threat, they just kind of dismiss it. Like <laughs> they look at it, is it a threat to us? No, okay, move along. And they've got that kind of mentality. Basically. So when they have something that they don't have a form or a box to check or a specific place to send it, they just get rid of it. They don't want to deal with it. You know, it's not part of what they do. So, you know, when you've got an object like this, I think Ryan Graves and the ASA are exactly right. There's no priority. There's no procedure. And these things just get swept under the carpet. So we don't know how many times these things have happened. And it's really difficult to tell what kind of a pattern these things are using if we don't have the data because they're all individually being swept under the rug here and there. You know, and with this particular object, that's a little difficult to explain, right? Because if it's a plasma ball, 
that would conceivably that would show up on radar. Right. Uh, it could conceivably change direction, but it would generally follow the magnetic fields that were there, one would think, and it wouldn't be making these rapid maneuvers. And right. it probably wouldn't go flying up into space. And it may or may not be shaped like a football. I don't know how tight of a football shape he was talking about, but it doesn't seem like that would be ball lightning. Right. So right. it's a little difficult to say what this craft would be or what this object would be. And if the military doesn't have a box for it specifically printed there and clear directives where to send it, they're just going to kind of throw it off to the side and go to the mess hall. And kind of what they're doing, like you're saying, is they're literally taking and throwing the poor pilots under the bus. When they have this important information that could be gathered and shared with all the other pilots, the U.S. military, the Air Force, the Navy, whoever's in control of this, is literally putting our uh, our flyboys at risk for this matter because they're not allowing them to catalog, share, disseminate, and come up with training well, and this, operational procedure well, well, of what they well, need to follow. And, and there's this yeah, there's just uh, can jump in here for one second. There's also another issue just to jump off of what you said there. It's not just the military, it's the commercial aircraft because what happens when this com shows up in a commercial aircraft that is right. not as maneuverable as a jet fighter, and they have to try and take evasive maneuvers, but their plane reacts a lot more slowly, and then they've got to try and go back the other way, right. and maybe they reacted in the wrong way, maybe people get injured. If you think turbulence is bad, something like that's a lot worse. So, uh, you know, something like this is, I think, something everyone who flies right. should be concerned about, even with commercial so, well, a lot of so what we're kind of saying here is a lot of these different things that are going on in the air that people are seeing and having to deal with these particular instances, it's almost like they should continue on, act like it isn't there. Don't do evasive maneuvers. These things are going to move out of your way and just stay the course and ignore rather than adapt to it. Yep. There was actually a case, a, a passenger commercial uh, plane. I was made aware of this was flying in Canada, and I believe they were flying west in Canada, and there was an object that they uh, thought sounded or seemed to look like a donut, they described it, and they took evasive maneuvers uh, to avoid it. And there was, I believe, a broken leg from a passenger on that incident, and I believe they recorded it as extreme turbulence. I had no I'd idea. Like to echo what, I'd hey, like to uh, echo what, Go ahead, what, go ahead, Larry. I was just going to echo what Thomas said. I, I think that the most natural response is to just let them uh, go ahead and observe you. Don't don't change course. Don't try to run up. They're not going to hurt you. But uh, yeah, just let it happen. Yeah, but I want to add something to there's that. There's no training um, for that. Actually, Christian has his something. hand up first, if we could, I'm Mike, and then I'll bring you in next. Go ahead, Christian. Thanks, Thomas. So I would like to add something here. Uh, James Fox said that one of the concerns the military has is that the more that this is in the sight, guys, the more uh, UAPs, the more the phenomena increases. So they obviously want to control, and they're going to lose control real quick. They already are. Um, but uh, and, and another thing that goes into that, and since 2021, the sightings have been out of control. Commercial pilots are seeing this on a daily basis. I have a few uh, air traffic control conversations where – you can hear the air traffic uh, controller telling the pilots, oh, again, yeah, this happened yesterday, whatever. Um, and the thing is, if people are unaware of this phenomena and they have fear, so what can happen is the phenomena affects them in a negative way. They can have uh, hitchhikers, but if they're not scared, then you got nothing to worry about. You got to see five people which have positive experiences. So the thing is, we need more information. Instead of being freaked out, what they need to do is just be transparent because it's already out. There's no going back. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. But as, as you know, we have not gotten to the point where there's been any kind of official declaration that NHI is here. Well, so I, think, I think the problem with the flight safety thing, right, which even RO and Congress are fine of, but the more and more this issue keeps occurring, the more and more mm -hmm. It goes into the cover up, right? It's like all roads lead to the cover up. Yes. So let me let me make my point real quick about what Peter was talking about and um, the story that Thomas just read about the Air Force Colonel who was a uh, 
F-15 fighter pilot. We only hear about stories like that in the public after people like this in the military retire. He wasn't talking about this when he was on active duty. He came out, retired, and then he brought this information forward. That is very bad. It yeah. makes me that the information is not relevant and being applied as a flight safety hazard when need be, when it's current and relevant. The next thing is these objects, when they come in close proximity to any aircraft, be it military or commercial, tend to have the effect of knocking the avionics out. They disrupt the systems of these aircraft for a short period of time. That is absolutely a flight safety hazard for anybody that's in the air. So nobody's addressing it. There's nothing in place currently right now to deal with that, which is why Ryan Graves formed his organization. But it's just a shame that with everything that's been coming out, the government is still not taking it seriously or putting into effect any type of means or methods to report it and to react to it and put out policy and guidelines. They're just ignoring it. Because it doesn't exist, Mike. Yeah, I get it, Larry. I understand. It's wrong, but and somebody eventually is going to get hurt over this, like Peter just mentioned. But the fact that it's still continuing to go on like that and not be directly addressed is disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's it's uh when when a plane when a plane comes down because the avionics gets knocked out, that's when the government will learn. And there and millions of people on that plane take photos and videos of this craft. Yeah, or it might get covered up and they might not do anything. Honestly, I wonder if there's been any accidents. I'm sure there has. And it just got covered up. That's my concern. They can't cover up a commercial attack like this. They can't. Commercial, the commercial you're right. They should. Well, it's a it. commercial. It's not an attack. It's in a commercial encounter. And based on footage encounter. I've seen here in the Pacific Northwest, more uh, if you want to call it in the Seattle, Washington area, there are non-human intelligence craft, which are not visible to our radar. Maybe they are, but they're not visible to the eye. And they are moving in the same pathways as our commercial jets are. We have ones that are uh, V-shaped craft, and we have ones that are V-shaped going along with a or moving along with it. And they are following right along with, if you want to call it, um, traditional aircraft or right behind them. Part of it, sometimes those craft will come down, not the aircraft, but the other craft from the non-human intelligence will come down to check out the sensors that are watching them. And when they do, the sensors go to static and they go out for a period of time. When the craft moves away, they come back online again. So clearly they have an ability to disable our electronics if they want to, or it's just a side effect of what they're getting uh, subjected to when the craft comes close. Mike? And to add what, to what Michael was saying is that uh, they could also have misidentification. So they they like the colonel thought that it was a Russian bomber, and he armed his he armed his he attempted to arm his missiles. Uh, you could that could create a, an incident that uh, could have a very tragic ending. That's a good point, Michael. Which is why they need to have a system in place where they take this seriously. And they have policy that the pilots can be made aware of. There is still currently no way for the commercial pilots to report this other than going through the FAA. But the FAA doesn't have a centralized uh, database. They, they don't have any personnel or budget, any money aside, to deal with this directly as far as getting this policy and, known. And what do the pilots, uh, the commercial pilots do? To defend themselves, you they, know, they, there's nothing they can do to defend themselves. It's a matter well, of just they keep on. A, they go into a, a an avoidance mode, where right? They, but they it's an avoidance die, mode that but, puts their passengers at risk versus just exactly. moving along and knowing this thing is going to move out of the way because they always do. Well, <laughs> hopefully they do. Yeah, but there's how, how many, one time where they yeah. don't. And as to the uh, interference with the uh, uh, controls and that, I've, avionics, I've, heard, yeah. uh, I've heard stories that uh, it's not just that being in the vicinity, it's that they do this on purpose. Like when this guy was going to fire a missile, his controls were immediately shut down. And when he decided not to fire the missile, they, they, uh, the controls came back on again. <laughs> so well, that's what Gates said, right? When Gates, uh, the, the pilots from 
I think with an Air Force Base, Air Force Base came close to this large orb, their flare shut off and their avionics shut off. Yeah. They had to manually take the picture and probably manually fly the craft back. Well, that's well. It's generally not all the way back, but manually fly their pilots. They can handle that kind of stuff. It's not like they're up in a fully automated craft and they press a button and all they're doing is sitting back and watching. Yeah. No, these are fully qualified pilots to deal with it. When they get too close to something, there's an issue going on with their avionics. That's about it. But every single one of those planes has pilots on it who are more than capable and should be sitting behind the wheel in any case anything potentially goes on. I just want to go ahead and bring up a message from Stone Apex before we go on to an interesting thing coming to us from uh, Matt Ford of the Good Trouble Show. Lots of reports of orbs attacking people in South America currently. It's like Claris 2.0. Has anyone in the back heard about this? I know I've read little bits about it here and there that there's something going off in that so, tip of Brazil that's, that sticks I, I, out. Lee, Lee sent me some stuff on it. He doesn't buy it because the Ronnie Vernon, he's asking for money to go see it, to go, uh, you know, investigate. Yeah, he's, he's suspicious of it because it's, it's behind the paywall. Yeah. It's a little odd. Yeah. So I think Lee is right on this, Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on. Let's move on to... Uh, Go ahead, Christian, before we move on to our next piece. Say, take it, my friend. Well, I, I don't care about whoever. I mean, I heard Marco Leal. He's, he did moment of contact uh, with James Fox talking about this. And there's a lot of different cases. I don't I, I don't know. I, it seems like the phenomenon is way more aggressive in South America. I don't know why. But I wouldn't disregard it completely. But at least, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm over it. I'm over it. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that up, Chris. Yeah. And absolutely. Sorry. I'm and, just... and real... Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, and real quick, I just want to uh, finish, uh, jump on something you were saying, Thomas. But, you know, as far as whether you avoid these things or keep flying steady and let them avoid you, that's exactly why we need to characterize these things so we can study them to figure out a protocol so we can figure out to separate them from airborne clutter and when you should move your plane and yeah. when you should keep your plane flying straight and not move it. And that's an argument that none of these kind of, uh, you know, Congress people that we've seen like Mike Lee and the like should be able to argue against. They're yeah. arguing against characterizing what's in the sky to coming up with proper procedures for right. flight safety. So absolutely. As a quick reminder for those who are watching the show right now, holy cow, would you look at this? We've got uh, 263 current viewers with only 130 likes. Are we doing something wrong or you're not having a good time? If you are, do us a friend, folks. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And if you're not having a good time, give us a thumbs down. We'll take one or the other. And generally speaking, on any given day, at least 25% of you are not subscribed to Disclosure Tonight. The only way we're going to get to 7,000 subs, our next goal is for you to go ahead and give us a, uh, give us a subscribe. We'd love to go ahead. And have you around as a regular on Disclosure Tonight. Remember, we broadcast five, six, sometimes seven days a week to go ahead and bring out the truth and the latest breaking disclosure. We'd love to have you around for a regular. On that note, let's go ahead and move into our next piece as we're talking about. This is coming to us from Matt Ford of the Good Trouble Show. Matt is saying, the chair of the House Intel, Representative Mike Turner, is compromised and must be replaced by Representative Gallagher, use the attached call script from Brodog and please call Office of the Speaker Kevin McCarthy at 202-225-2915, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern. I'm going to go ahead and take this particular tweet. I am going to go ahead and share this in the particular in the chat for everyone and anyone to go ahead and go ahead. Please save this particular link. And go ahead and follow up with it. Let me get into the next tweet coming out of this. Uh, number two. General, here's the script. Oh, Jesus Christ. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, bro dog scripts are really long. And it need, this whole thing needs to be taken down to about two paragraphs, a couple sentences to really get sentences. people's points across. Yeah. yeah. Bro dog really gets into this. Holy cow. So but Bro the thing dog is, has a real hard on for Salas, man. Every tweet with any, that's kind of okay. He, he, he really Salas, respects Salas, him and Salas. everything. The biggest thing just to take and realize and understand with this is do us, do yourself a favor. 
pick up the phone and call Office of the Speaker of the House, Kevin Kevin McCarthy, at 202-225-2915 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern to let him know that you want to see the House and Tell uh, uh, lead, uh, committee lead of Mike of Representative Mike Turner say that he's compromised and he must be replaced by Representative Gallagher. I think Gallagher is from Wisconsin, isn't he? I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Great movements on that completely. We'll have to see. It helps if you write your correspondence on a $2 bill. Yes. I just, I just don't think that kind of letter is going to be well received. Um, Compromised is a, is a accusation that isn't proven. Um, it everybody takes money. Well, the whole damn. Con- well, considering you know. he's taken a million dollars of funding from the defense agency, and the way he's oh, talking know. about David Grush and what's being brought out, he ha- he is financially compromised. He has more than anything a conflict of financial interest about bringing out the truth. And that's the thing we all need to be careful of. You know, because you know, Burchette's working on something good right now because he's been real quiet. He's on vacation too. Remember? Yeah, but so is Garcia and Grothenberg, but they still came on to talk. No. Now, coming from David Grush, remember what Grush had said in the past: "Quote: I personally briefed the House Select Committee on Intelligence." staff director at that time and its general counsels and Congressman Mike Turner's personal staffer. Congressman Turner has not followed up with me and based on his public statements, it appears that he has not asked for a briefing on my testimony or has failed to ask the intelligence community's inspector general for more information. So this is again, dealing with one of those situations where Mike Turner Due to the money he's been pulling in from the, uh, if you want to call it defense contractors, has a conflict of truth, a conflict of interest. And he's someone, if you have someone in that kind of a role and they're that compromised, the best thing to do, pull them out, put someone in who's more, doesn't, you know, but anyone who's going to go in that role is going to have the suitcases of money come out, uh, if you call it Monty Monty Hall style. From let's make a deal. Are you going to take the money in your hand, or are you going to open up the brief, the suitcases, and say, "Would you like to have this?" That's the problem that our Supreme Court allows and is, unfortunately, part of our democracy. Ooh, ooh I'm back, man. Food was good. Yeah, I've got some good food here as well. All right, what do we have coming from Christopher Sharp? Uh, Let's bring up another tweet here. Since 2002, the Council of International Federation of Advanced Studies has helped six UAP has held six UAP conferences at the Vatican. The purpose of the conferences was to assist the Catholic Church to prepare for any confirmation of non-human intelligence. So there you go, folks. It's been going on. Since 2002, the Vatican's been getting ready for this. So they've had, well, they've known about this since the 30s and the 40s. And now as it's coming closer, they're bringing more people in saying, hey, folks, we're going to have to get this together to keep this thing going because otherwise the money we've got coming in is going to freaking plummet. How can we keep our constituents? How can we keep our followers? How can we keep our believers in line and to keep us keep on sending us the money is the unfortunate wow. truth. I got to mention too, Thomas, that um, ever since they made that statement about, well, all all creatures are God's children, we'll baptize them too. Um, Ever since that statement, they've gone dark on the issue. And then the only comment that has come out of the Vatican recently was a complete debunking, we don't believe that you know, they're here, that kind of thing. So there's division within the Vatican, definitely. Let's take a look at Chris's piece, although we need to work with Chris to get this more put together better for mobile. That's okay. Uh, We'll help him get there. The Vatican and UFOs coming to us from Christopher Sharp from the Liberation Times. This is actually back in January 20th, 2022, uh, almost, well, two and a half, a year and a half ago. So 
as of today, the, or as of then, the Vatican does not have an official position on ET life or any potential presence on Earth. But remember, the Pope did come out and say, yeah, considering everything else is out there, there could be life of somewhere else out there in the universe. And if they came to me, of course, yes, I'd, tr- I'd baptize them. So it's, it's, way, it's a way to go ahead and acknowledge it, but also not to acknowledge it with respect to how it could affect the Catholic Church. And However... Critically, the, it's it's also categorizing them not as demons. Right. Every other religious institution is going to call them demons. Catholics are not. Okay. Uh, nobody's got their hand up. There's a saw. mission, though, for Christians right now. Sorry, I apologize. Go ahead. No, go, go. We need you. Christian. Well, I've been seeing online that Christians are on a mission to uh, call this uh, demons, UFOs yeah. demons. They do not want to say aliens. They are literally on a mission to say this is demons. We shouldn't pay attention to this. So, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I've been noticing that uh, yeah. lately. Well, I've been anticipating this for many years. I knew this was coming because at any time I would have a conversation with anyone in that field, the religious area. And they actually would acknowledge that UFOs are real. They would say they are demons. And well, let me let me add, Larry, real quick. There's a part of the Pentagon that's referred to as the Collins Elite yes. that Lou ran into. And they firmly believe that the UAP subject are, in fact, demons because they're highly religious. So yes. that's deep, deep within the intelligence community and within the uh, Pentagon. So that's not unheard of. There are people with those strong beliefs, as wrong as they may be, but they exist. Yeah. That's the and, problem. And their and their logic is this. They're demons, and if we don't engage them, we're safer. If we engage them, we're inviting disaster. That's their position. God help yeah, us. Yeah, the call is the the doing very well. Uh, I read a, a book uh, with Nick Rick. That was their whole conclusion. Yeah. So, they, they don't exist. And, yeah, Thomas, uh, let Christian know his mic is like going in and out. We're not really hearing him too clearly. He's too far away from it. I don't have to uh, be quiet for a little bit. No, no, now we can hear you better, Ms. Chris. Now that you got close to the phone, we can actually hear you. Oh, yeah, I was just saying that the Collins Elite, that there's a book about that, and they came to the conclusion, as Larry was saying, that believing in these things and i was talking about that earlier on the uptick of the phenomena since 2020 2021 that the more you believe in this the more um it shows up and if you don't believe in it it doesn't affect you but at the end of the day we're living in a bubble and it's not reality so i don't agree with that and something else actually luke is bringing up here in the back as well is that you know they always want to call these different things we're seeing in the sky as as demons but the truth of the matter is they're probably also the angels as well so you just have to take an open 360 perspective on this and just not take everything and throw it down under the bus hey thomas peter has his hand up thank you (laughs) there you go I was, I was just going to mention on what Larry said, that I hope that whatever civilization eventually finds the Voyager spacecraft that we launch, do a better job than shooting them down because they thought they were from demons. And I would hope we can yeah. do a better job than that, too. Thank you. Again, thank you, Peter. Oh, Jesus. Hi, Larry. Hi. Hey, Jonathan, go ahead. Oh, I got nothing. I, I just got here. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. However, the, uh, that may change as we could be witness to the confirmation of non-terrestrial intelligence residing on Earth. Since 2002, the Italian think tank has held six conferences to the Vatican about the prospect of non-human intelligence. In 2020, the Vatican St. Peter's Square Nativity decorations included a figure of what appeared to be an astronaut in a spacesuit gripping the moon in their hands. In a recent article, the Vatican astronomer Christopher Graney mocked UAP comparing the phenomenon to mermaids. Such tactics are reminiscent of those used against Galileo. 
The Vatican refers to UAP as unexplained flying things or res in explanate volantes. In 1961, it was alleged that Pope John XXIII encountered an alien at his summer palace. So there you go. So the public, the Catholic Church has a long standing, if you want to call it, interaction with this, and they're going to have to go ahead to go ahead and understand what's going around and how do we explain it? How do we bring it into our lore and to our religion to go ahead and keep things together versus helping keep them apart? I guess I got perfect Latin. I had no idea. <laughs> Any thoughts from you, Mr. Larry? Oh, um, you know, I, I always said that the Catholics were the, the best uh, group for, you know, being pro ET. And th there's certainly evidence for that. Um, but uh, it's, an, you know, I mean, so do you want to praise that religion? Well, you know, there's so many negatives about that religion. Like they try, they try to um, put a middleman between you and, and God. And that is um, control in a way. Right. You our know, relationship and, with our creator is between yeah. us and God. There shouldn't be a yeah. middleman that you have to shell out money to every time you go into it or for every piece of money that you make that you have to say, oops, wait, this goes to the church. No, <laughs> all of that should, this is about our personal relationship. This isn't praying to a priest or praying to a cross. It's praying to God itself. It's praying to it's it's communicating with the one, and it's about pushing away any of the things. Anytime you have someone who wants to instill them between you and that other person, it's about having that personal connection. That's why meditation and some of the different religions that are out there are more about that versus having that institution who has to be in place who you need to go ahead and support. I'm seeing some thumbs up from you, Larry. Take it. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Well said, Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. What else do we have going on here? Uh, oh, boy. Um, all right. So, closing statement. I, I'm sure everyone's aware that David Grush's closing statement never got to the hearing. We never heard it, did we, Larry? Yeah. No, I heard that last night. I, I did not hear his closing statement, so... Do yeah. we have it? As I would usually say, that's wild and wacky stuff, and I did not know that. So let's go right. ahead and bring it up and read it and see what the great Carcinio has to bring out. Let's bring into it. Closing statement. Here we go. It is with a heavy heart and a determined spirit that I stand under oath before you today, having minute, made is the L LBJ? Huh? No. Is no. this LBJ? No, this is David Grush. <laughs> Okay. okay, it is with a heavy heart and a determined spirit that I stand under oath before you today, having made the decision based on the data I collected and reported to provide this information to the committee. I am driven in this duty by conviction to expose what I viewed as grave congressional oversight issue and a potential abuse of executive branch authority. This endeavor was not born out of malice or dissatisfaction, but from an unwavering commitment to the truth and transparency and endeavor rooted in our inherent duty to uphold the United States Constitution, protect the American people, and seek insights into this matter that have the potential to redefine our understanding of the world. Beautiful. In an era Fraught with division and discord, our exploration into the UAP subject seems to resonate with an urgency and fascination that transcends political, social, and geographical boundaries. This is tying into what literally, what, um, if you want to call it, Ronald Reagan said back in the day, if there was a threat that came from maybe an extraterrestrial presence that it would unite humanity in a way that we would never have imagined. 
Let's move and what on. David is saying here is that even without a threat, just the fascination over the subject is uniting us. Yes. A democratic process must be adhered to when evaluating the data, and it is our collective responsibility to ensure that public involvement is encouraged and respected. Indeed, the future of our civilization and our comprehension of humanity's place on Earth and in the cosmos depends on the success of this very process. It is my hope that the revelations we unearth through investigations of the non-human reverse engineering programs I have reported will act as an ontological shock. Ontological meaning earth-shattering shock. A catalyst for a global reassessment of our priorities. Same thing as what Reagan said. As we move forward on this path, we might be poised to enable extraordinary techno technological process in a future where our civilization surpasses the current state of the art in propulsion, material science, energy production, and storage, meaning energy storage. Even storage. Yes. Yeah. The good. knowledge we stand to gain should spur us toward a more enlightened and sustainable future where one collective curios curios curiosity is ignited and global cooperation becomes the norm rather than the exception. Thank you. So that is one heck Thank of a you. closing statement that came to us from, from Grush, I have to say, that a lot of people haven't gone and covered, including it us until now. I've heard of it. It's a bomb. Say that again, Chris. Oh, I, I was just saying the first time I've heard of it, that's a bomb. Like, you just uh, dropped off. There's a lot to unpack there. We got microphone problems again, Christian. Well, now can you guys hear me now? Yeah. So no, I was just saying that was uh be that was beautiful, and there's a, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, he dropped uh some big bombs there. Yes. He said the future of the, of our civilization. What did he say about that? Didn't he say the future of our civilization depends on how we treat this? issue or something along those lines did i catch that right yeah he's he's essentially yes and he's essentially saying unless we uh give the american people the information we already have they're never going to uh we're, we're never as a society going to progress beyond where we're at right now it, the, the key to our future is in the stuff that they're hiding from us god damn it and in the in our in in, in that place instead they're giving us wars like, aren't you happy with the wars? Don't you? Mike Turner's happy with it. He loves talking about it. Mike Turner is willing to go to a nuclear war with China. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, like it's become a fucking farce. Uh oh. The whole thing. Uh oh. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he meant that I was asking because I'm sure you guys have heard there's like a, a lot of people think there's something coming possibly a, apocalyptic I mean I don't want to go down that rabbit hole but he said that and I, I thought about that I, I, I don't know I, uh, I wonder I wish I had a little bit more clarity on what he meant by that exactly Oh, sorry, just dealing with some other kind of things going on in the background. It's been a great show, great conversation. Anyone else have comments on this before we go ahead and wrap this up? Uh, yeah, I do, Thomas. I, I, I'm just going to throw back to, to this um, this end of um, his closing statement from David Grush, um, echoing a few of the thoughts, uh, comments from in chat. Um, why was it that it wasn't, he wasn't allowed to, to give it? Um, was it a time constraint, do we know? Or was there any other reason? Because I don't believe he actually said it, did he? Said what again? I'm sorry? His his closing statement. Did he actually... He, no, he didn't have a chance to say it. Because time ran out and everything, he didn't have a chance to go through his closing statement, which was a really good statement. It was published out, but it was something uh, that, that had to be covered. 
Okay. I'm going to, I want to comment on something that from last night's show in a bit as well, unless anybody else wants to speak. Go for it, my buddy. They were, yes. Burchett, Burchett was um, amazed by the intense pushback there was. Uh, there was even pushback to have McCullen, like, uh, sitting right behind David Grush. There was pushback on that. Like, everything you could possibly imagine, there was pushback, even on the seating chart. So having his lawyers Absolutely sit behind insane. him. The deep state, the deep state was willing to pull out every single freaking string. I'm sure they threatened McCarthy, too, but McCarthy held his word, which is why I have hope that he will select, submit, uh, approve the select committee. Yeah. Well, it, it's time. It's going to have to see where all of this is going to go. Welcome back, Andrew Gnomes and Trucking Express. It's been a while since we've seen you. Hopefully you've seen some good things out in the skies as well. At this point, I want to go ahead and thank everybody for the, all the wonderful Super Chats we had today. Holy cow. If I can find this, where to go. Who are they coming from? Let's go ahead and say Cosmic Dave UK. I missed this one, Dave. Thomas, may I ask anyone who is interested in orbs and other cosmic experience? We do follow them. Follow the MFMP. It may be uh, worth a while. Look, and it's fun. And he shared a particular link out to YouTube. Thank you very much, Cosmic Dave UK, for that wonderful super chat. Sorry I missed that. I've been dealing with a lot of things behind the scenes. Also want to thank Stoned Ape Apex. Uh, actually, Stoned Apex. Thank you very much. Cosmic Dave UK again. Hayden, Cosmic Dave UK again. Cosmic Dave UK again. The Daryl Zernick. And starting off the Super Chats tonight, it looked like Cosmic Dave UK has been the one giving us a lot of people here. So uh, actually, a lot of Super Chats. Thank you very much, Cosmic Dave UK. We appreciate all the love and support of everything you brought in here today. Uh, not not just that, I also want to go ahead and thank everybody who's still in the chat now, who's been a part of the show. Let's go ahead and take a look and see who we still have out there. This is part of the show where we go ahead and thank everybody because we're so thankful for everyone being a part of this. Whether you're in the are. chat or you're in the back, let's go ahead and thank Cosmic Hutos, Duke Skellington, Firefly, Galactic Maya, Greg O'Brien. Uh, let's change that to now. Well, I turn that one down. I want to thank. Oh wow, we actually have Greg O'Brien here, longtime Sono C. Greg Kathy has been here. Kevin Clark, uh, Lady D, uh, Metal Gaming. Moon Eyes has been around along with Niles Guy, Michael Suckloff, OG Skywatch. Uh, Owen from Ohio, Paul Damon, um, PC, also known as Paul, uh, Ryan Baker. Thanks for coming in today, Ryan. Also, Russian Malone, Sven, all the way from Sweden. Long time you no know, see, Sven. Good to see you back. The Mac Geek and the Tom Whitmore. He made it to the end. I appreciate everybody coming out today to go ahead and talk about such a wonderful show. More importantly, I want to go ahead and thank the people who are in the back who have been a part of this. Let me go ahead and do this. There you go. I want to go ahead. Thanks for coming out today, Larry. You and your wonderful hair. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. It was a good show. Absolutely. Andy W., all the way from the United Kingdom. Thanks for coming out today, Andy. Great show, mate. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be working again next week, so I'll be uh, in chat, but I'll be here in, in spirit, if not in presence. Absolutely. Christian Morales from the Upper Midwest. Thanks for coming out today, Christian. Jonathan, thanks for being around. Sorry, my my fam my family's crazy. They're Italians. <laughs> we know about that one. Oh my gosh, they're they're <laughs> laughing in the background. They're crazy. You got to have some fun with it. Lord William, thanks for coming in from Southern California. Marina, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Lots of passion today. I love listening to you guys talk. I know, I know. Michael Sucklaw, thanks for coming out today, Michael. You're welcome, Thomas, anytime. Appreciate Mr. Peter Panda for dropping in and having some good things to say. Oh, absolutely. The cow is out of the bag at this point. Yeah, so, so we're the cows little... out of the bag, I'd just like to remind you, you can send your cow's DNA to William Shatner. Just mail your cow pies to William Shatner. He will form it into the shape of a crystal and place it on the moon so your cow's DNA can survive for eternity on the surface of the moon for a half million dollars. Oh, it's a deal, my God. Two spots left, you and one other person. That's it. Going fast. There you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. I greatly appreciate that. But wait, wait, wait. There's more. We had another super chat come in from Laura Greeno saying Team Fessler and Cupcake. 
Lots of love and hearts. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Laura Greeno. Cupcake is up, finishing off her breakfast this morning. I have to go check in on her and see how she's doing. Also want to thank Primetologist. Thanks for coming in today, Prime. Also, Swan Patel. Thanks for coming out today, Swan. It's been a great day. Maybe he's working out. Syrup, keep it pouring, my friend. Hey, Thomas. Uh, it was a good show today, man. I didn't really have much to say. I've just been kind of listening and trying to catch up to speed. Like I said, man, it was a good show. Good show. That's what it's about sometimes. I also want to thank uh, Scoopy for being around. Thanks, Scoopy. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure, Thomas, and I'm going to head back to Party City where I belong. Oh, we'll get there soon, my friend. And also that Thank you, leaves... Thomas. Oh, of course, Primetologist, thanks for coming around. And all that leaves Tracy Scott, my dear lady. Thanks for coming out today and sharing so many great thoughts. We greatly appreciate that. Come on, Tracy. Come on, hit that button. Say thank you. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> thank you, Thomas. Love you. Love you, too. Mwah! And on that note, as we usually say at the end of every one of our episodes of Disclosure Tonight, eyes open, no fear, be safe, everyone. No, not really, but absolutely. We'll catch you on the flip side. I've got some food to eat and some disagreements to on re-agreement on. Appreciate that, everybody. Love you. Catch you soon. Bye-bye. Have a good one.